welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is April 22nd, 2019, and we are going to be talking about good representation and bad representation. My name is Jules Caserta. I use they, them pronouns. To my right is... I'm Naven. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm Piper, and any pronouns. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. So to start off, let's talk about the common problems we see in media when it comes to all forms of representation. Obviously, we are all Caucasian, so we <laughs> cannot really talk about certain representations, but we can talk about the queer kind. So let's do it. Common problems we see. Token gay guy. Token gay guy. Yeah, especially for Basic. gay men, it's like their entire personality. Like they know. It's a lot the of one trait is just gay. Yeah, it's like they it's know a lot get. about fashion. They're sassy. Um, I hate that word. Um, I'm sassy. <laughs> yeah, they're like <laughs> sassy. They're um, like flamboyant. They're like, often like, fem like I feel like the, the feminine, feminine gay guy. Yeah, it's like incredibly the feminine. Analogy. Like there's obviously there's nothing wrong with that. Well, but, right, like, it's but it's just like, like just not the, the token, like the, the go-to. Yeah, the first time I saw that was in the show Glee, which aired in 2009, <laughs> and it was a character Kirk Hummel, and he was just this, his trait was gay, and he sings. That's literally it. And it was like he got some character development because it, it ran for a very long time. But like the, the first thing I knew about him was gay. They didn't even say it, but you could just like know that they were making him into that guy. Yeah. And then later on they said it. But like the minute you see him, you're like, he's gonna be the gay guy. Yeah. I mean, like the problem with that kind of representation is that like, yeah, you have a gay character, and it's not like necessarily negative. You're like not portraying, portraying them in a negative way, but it's also like gay people are more than just gay. Like I'm just I'm just gay. Just what I am. I have no other personality, no other traits. I'm just queer. Yeah, exactly. Like they're like actual people, just like just like straight people. They just have different forms of attraction, or like are attracted yeah. to different. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. Glee is actually an interesting show when it comes to representation because in the beginning they just like did all the tokens. Like you had the token gay guy. You had the main pretty white girl. Obviously, just who you had. You had the to there was like a the quiet nerdy Asian. And, like, throughout time, they started to get, like, a, as, as the world kind of progressed, so did the show, because, again, it started in 2009. So they started to, like, get more characters. There was a lesbian couple for a little while. Not very the healthiest lesbian couple, but it was there. <laughs> so it's a very interesting show to talk about. And then there's also a, the, con the obvious lesbian stereotype, which is the butch lesbian. I've... I've seen butch lesbian, and then I've also seen, um, like, very sexualized lesbian oh, I oh. hate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You want to talk about that? I know you two can. <laughs> that, that sounds really... <laughs> That's uncomfortable, but um, yeah. Um, but very sexualized just lesbian. It's sex yeah, no, I feel like lesbians are... It's like straight sexual. guys who are like, lesbians are hot. Yeah, yeah it's and, then, like, and well, then it's like, or girls I mean, I can't who deny fetishize either. gay men, it's like... Very straight women who are like, ooh, that's hot. It's like, it's like they fetishize it, but then they also like pretend to be an ally. Oh, yeah. but they actually like aren't. They just think it's like hot. Yeah, it's like they're like I support you because I read some fan fiction about it, and yeah, it's like it's not what support is. Yeah, and like Sweetie. they'll get mad if people call them out, and I don't know. It's just a whole lot of bad. I'm, I'm an going ally. Tumblr. I like all of your. Totally not safe, like all these not safe for work things. Like, <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, so there's that, there's that kind of like you, especially on like social media platforms, you like kind of go into like the fandom community and you kind of have a few queer ships, and then suddenly you're like in this place of it's like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? It's all just super sexual, and it's like, oh my god, it's like. So, because it's like, it, it's bad rep because it's really, it's all sexualized and so sad and disappointing on Again, so many it's levels. Like stripping them of the personality. Yeah. Making yeah. them either just the gay guy or just this like sexual thing. Yeah. That's and really sad. Um, one common thing I've seen, um, especially with like gay relationships, um, I've, I think I've seen it a few times with lesbian relationships, but like, the relationship dynamic is very abusive. It's like a weird power dynamic in it. Yeah, I know, it's I like too. Yeah, there's like this like one guy is like bigger, usually like sometimes older, it's like a very Ew. uncomfortable age gap. So there's this older Call me by your name, cough cough. <coughs> <laughs> Legitimately coughs. <laughs> I cough when I'm surprised. Um so you'll just have like this older guy and like an uncomfortable age gap. Like so this older guy might be like 30 or something 
and then this younger guy's like maybe 19 and like sure it's legal doesn't mean it's like it's a, there's all, it's always a weird power dynamic yeah it's always weird and like the older guys like controlling and the y- younger guys like really submissive and it's seen as like really hot and i've seen like that sort of relationship yeah. dynamic like sexualized and fetishized a lot so fun fact i'm in te- i'm a teenager obviously and i'm growing up in the day it is now we have social media we have like fandoms we have that place and i was I was, there were two stories that I have. There was one where I was in fandom. I was shamed for having a straight ship. And I was like, I was, con- I was confused. Because first of all, like, I'm clearly queer. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious. I'm wearing a rainbow dress. I'm doing this. <laughs> and I, like, I don't hide that online either. So if you like, look at anything I've ever done, it's just gay. <laughs> and they were like, you aren't supporting LGBTQ plus rights by having a straight ship. And I was like, what does that mean? That's like so weird. It was just bizarre because it was like reversed. <laughs> it was like backwards. I was like, I'm used to being shamed for being queer, but like, what's going on? Yeah. And then it was another it's time. Right. Damn. It was another time where it was like, you're fetishizing this sexuality. And I'm like, this is my own sexuality. <laughs> like, I'm not fetishizing it. I'm craving representation. <laughs> And it just, because then the, there are those people who sexualize it. They then come and they like start to like infiltrate the, the nice places. And it's like, stop. <laughs> but you're talking about age gap. And I know you and I have discussed Call Me By Your Name. And I know you have feelings on it. So Share it's, feelings now. I have never seen Call Me By Your Name. I've read a lot about it. Um, I believe one of them's 17, the other's like 25, 24, or something like that. And I just, uh, it's well, just seventeen so, is underage too. Seventeen is underage, and it's just so gross and uncomfortable. I don't know. I just hate that so much. Like, I don't understand if you're just gonna have like a sexual relationship where one person's underage. It's like, just, it's just like, why are you doing that? I just hate it's that like, so much. Also, it wouldn't really change the story if you made them a little bit older. Yeah, like. Like, if you like, just change the age, it's not going to affect a lot. Just, yeah. just like, why do you have to choose that age? Like, why the age gap? I, 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 mean, I know hot. the movie is based off of... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I that know was... the movie is based off a book, right? And the movie is kind of like what picked up a lot of traction. Yeah. So they were probably going off the book, but just for the book. Like, why? Yeah. Like, literally, what purpose does it serve? And then, going back a little bit to the fandom community, because I just thought of something. You see an abundance of gay white guy ships. They're like the only ships out there and they're always like these two white guys that literally have no reason to be shipped but they're just doing it because they're two gay white guys. Yeah. And it's just like, do you not see this? That's literally all I see is just people because two white guys share, a, are in the same room, suddenly it's a gay ship. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, oh, what yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally just like because they're white and people fetishize white gay guys. And another thing is like, I've seen a lot of, um, people just shipping to, like, characters of the same This is just a gender. shipping episode now. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's just, <laughs> I'll see, like, two people shipping two men or, like, two women just because they're two men or two women. And then, yeah. like, and even if it's, 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 like, it's, like, age gaps, abusive, no matter what, they're just, like, if you hate this. It's hot. First off, they're, like, it's hot. And then they're, like, if you hate this, you're terrible you're homophobic you're homophobic and i've been called homophobic so much online and i'm like what online's a fun place online because and <laughs> a lot of the time it's like not inherently bad like it's not inherently bad representation until people obviously take it and turn it a little bit weird but yeah. like it's just like not it's you're close especially like with showrunners it's like you're close you're just not there yet yeah especially like you it's like on, like, if you're gonna put like a gay like a, a gay person in your show for the sake of them being a gay person, like go through the effort of giving them like a story arc. Yeah. And instead like, of just like being there, yeah. and so it's just like make the queers happy. Or like get a gay writer or someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Not even honestly, not even like it's not that like it doesn't just make a story that. D- I mean, apparently it is hard. And apparently so. it's hard. I would just love to see a story about a gay person that doesn't revolve around them being gay. Yeah. It's like a, just a side fact that's there. Like they yeah. just happen to be queer. That's literally it. They yeah. just happen to like dudes or like women, like whatever the yeah, mm, 
It depends. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. in some cases, like in Love Simon, where it was all about like that's good. Yeah, that's, that's really like, good. Love Simon is good, but like the watch whole... it. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> watch I was, it. I was confused for a second. Read it too. Do it all. Sorry, I'm interrupting you, but like, oh my god. So Love Simon was just all about him like coming to terms with his sexuality and then like coming out or like getting out and like all that stuff happened. Getting out. Getting outed. Yeah. <laughs> I said, just getting out, and I was like, we're going to change that. <laughs> Instead of coming out, you just get out. He needed to leave the house. Um, no, but, like, that was good representation, and it was all about the fact that he was gay. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily bad in, like, showing, like, what it's like. Mm-hmm. Like, having representation that shows, like, what it's like to be LGBT. That's, yeah. But also, like, you need, like, not only, like, stuff like that, but also, like, just other stuff where yeah. they're just people. So you opened the Love Simon wormhole. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk. <laughs> Love Simon. Um, the book and the movie are so good. It is. Ba- it's all about him being gay, which is perfectly fine. I love those. I'm not saying like don't have those. I'm just yeah. saying like maybe just like make it a side fact occasionally. Or like make just more representation. Or like just don't even make a thing out of it. It's just like oh yeah, that character's gay. Yeah. Or bi or whatever. Yeah. But Love Simon. They. It's all about him coming to terms with it. It's all and it's a healthy relationship. It's a good. They're the same age. It shows the high, it shows high school really well, I think. It also shows the way their parents did it. I loved that whole thing with his parents and his yeah. family. They handled it so, so well. So Becky Albertalli, who is the writer of the book, has done three books, all of them wonderful books. I've read them all. Well, I should say more, but I've only read the gay ones. So there are three gay ones, and I've read those. <laughs> <laughs> They're all so good. There's The Upside of Unrequited which is, the main character isn't queer, but her sister is, she's bi, and she, those, these two girls are being raised by these two moms. And it's a wonderful story, all so sweet and healthy relationships, and it's just wonderful, they handle things so well. And then Leia on the offbeat, or Leah, however you want to pronounce it's, it. I know you got, it's, it's, it's Leia. It's literally pronounced Leah. It's Leia. L-E-A-H, Leah. Oh, Whatever, <laughs> Leia on the offbeat, which is, a, it's a sequel to Love, Simon, so... Love Simon fans, you're there. Read the book. It's so under. It's ooh, such a good book. And Le- Leia is shown to be- Leia is shown to be bisexual, and it's all about her coming to terms with falling in love with her best friend, and her best friend being like, "I'm straight, but I like you." So what's going on? And it's which is a mood, <laughs> and which is so good. And all of her books that I've read have been absolutely amazing. So check those out if you want good representation. Yeah, honestly, like I think Love Simon was the first representation of a um, gay male relationship at least that I saw that was healthy. Did you come to our, our QSA brought a bunch of people over to see it? Did you, were you with us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't, yeah, in the theaters. Yeah, when we, we all, we were all like, this is a huge deal, we're gonna go and we're gonna watch it and it was um, great. It was just sad that like, it wasn't the first representation I've seen of a gay couple. It's like, a like, good one. Yeah, it was, it's the first <laughs> good one I've seen and like, like, anything else I've seen was just, like, really stereotyped or really fetishized, and now um, it's just nasty. Yeah. Also, I was, like, semi-outed, too. So, like, having Love, like, Love Simon talk about it, and I think there was a line that was, like, it was supposed to be, like, my choice and, like, my thing. Yeah. And it was, they handled that so well, too. So they did this whole story, like, like they did this whole story about him being able, they did it well, <laughs> which is the most important thing. Like, it was a good story. Just by itself, a good story, and then but it was also just queer. Yeah. Because yeah. like you either get like one or the other. Like either it's a good story, or it's a bad story, but it's gay. Yeah, no. And it's like I end up like sacrificing good writing for gay, because I'm like I need something, please. Yeah, honestly, I'd rather just have it all be straight characters than badly written LGBT characters. Because yeah. that's just, it's just it's just. Or just sad. like don't even say. Like, just let it be, like, ambiguous in your story. And just, like, let everyone just be, like, "Mm, figure it out. You can put whatever label you want on these characters. I know, but another problem with it being ambiguous is there's just going to be assholes who are, like, can I swear? Like, mild swearing. Okay. It's too late anyways. But there's just going to be these jerks. Oh, you meant asshole. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so there's going to be these jerks (laughs) who are just, like, um, who are, like, you can't label that character that because, like, the writers didn't say it. it. Yeah, they didn't say it. And, like, they're just going to, like take these, like, very obviously queer-coded characters and say no because they're going to say, like, they're not 
actually queer because the writers didn't say that. Mm -hmm. And the queer coding also, which you mentioned, has like a really interesting history. Yeah. Where it's like there was this ban essentially on this ki on in um, Hollywood where like you can't have queer characters for a very long time, and writers were like, well, we want them, <laughs> so they gave them certain traits, which is kind of where stereotypes come from, is they gave them certain traits. I think. Fact check me on this. <laughs> I think to like so that queer audiences could see it and be like we understand but straight people wouldn't get like up in arms about it and yeah. they'd be like they never said they were queer so it's fine yeah. like the queer ones know they're yeah. like that was not a friendship kiss i see that so much <laughs> that people going it's a friendship kiss i'm like what the especially hell is a friendship with, kiss especially with lesbians like, especially with, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i was thinking of all the like posts where it's like oh she's just being nice to me like when it's like lesbian it's like no honey she's flirting with you yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. she's a lesbian yeah. But I I legitimately saw them when there's like a picture of two gay like two gay guys kissing like after they like a historical picture after they like won a war, and the caption was like two shoulder uh, soldiers sh shoulders <laughs> share a friendship kiss a friendship in like celebration, kiss. and I was like, honey, they gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen that picture. And then Pinterest. Pinterest. Is it on Pinterest? Because mine was on Pinterest. On oh dang. Yeah. No, I don't. Social use media diversity. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't think that exists. Um, queer coding, but, queer also, coding. but also there's the opposite of like um, where people are like leaving it ambiguous to where people are like, oh yeah, that person's LGBT when they're like not at AK rolling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Should we go into that next? Sure. Harry Potter, major franchise, love it with all my heart. JK Rowling, please delete your Twitter. <laughs> So you can have Twitter, I don't care, freedom of speech, but like, stop. So, for anyone watching who doesn't know, I don't know how you don't know, but J.K. Rowling came out after the books were published, after they were all published, and she decided that she was gonna say Dumbledore, who is an, uh, like Harry's father figure, that he was gay. And her reasoning for not, she defended it by saying that I didn't put it in the books because it was from the perspective of Harry, and he wouldn't have seen that. That's her defense, that was like her defense about it. Which, fair, it's in the perspective of an 11 year old in the beginning. Like he's not gonna be like, you're gay, Dumbledore, I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, I was, but like, <laughs> I do that with my teachers. I'm like, are you sure you're straight? What? what? You just like hear them talk about your per their personal life and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. What? But that was her reasoning, that's, that's why. <laughs> Anyways. That's why she didn't put it in the book. <laughs> moving on from my weird comment. Um, why she didn't put it in the books. And then that was kind of became, she didn't get a lot of backlash from that. She's getting, been getting more recently because she's been doing that a lot now, where she's like, oh, there's one Jewish guy in all of Hogwarts. She did that. <laughs> she was like, his name is like Anthony Goldstein. And he's the one Jewish guy in all of Hogwarts. I was like, why? And also just her books in general, like they don't have any diversity. All the yeah. characters are white. and. Except for Dumbledore, straight. <laughs> and, and then, like, like, and then to the whole Hermione thing too, which I don't know if we want to go into. Go for it. So, I mean. Cursed Child is the sequel, sequel, to Harry Potter. It's marketed as like the ninth book, I think, or the eighth book. I'm How many? However many there are, I'm, I'm a like, fake fan. Be the It'd be the eighth. I'm a fake fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> But it wasn't actually a book. It was a play that wasn't written by J.K. Rowling. And the actress who played Hermione, the older Hermione in this play, was black. Cool. But then her, instead of just like leaving it as that, just saying like the actress was black because she was the best person for the role, which I'm assuming she was. Yeah. Instead of leaving it at that, her, uh, J.K. Rowling went on record to say that Hermione was black the whole time. <laughs> when in the book, it says Hermione's white face on multiple occasions. So now she's just lying. <laughs> and like, honestly, like if she wanted to make these characters like gay or people of color in the beginning, hell yeah. But she's doing it after the fact when there's now proof that they're not. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, didn't with Dumbledore, all, it's like kind of didn't she, Grindelwald. It's like. just kind of lazy. But didn't she like tweet that like Dumbledore and Grindelwald had like an intense sexual relationship? That, that was her exact wording, intense sexual relationship. That's like kind of fetish, I think. It's like you can't, you can't like say it's... It's fetishizing. But you can't but like, say it's, not, it's from yeah. a perspective of an 11 year old and then go intense sexual relationship. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, pick a side. Yeah. And then <laughs> this the whole kinds of Grindelwald, which are the new movies, if you don't know, that are coming out now in this universe, featuring Dumbledore. And there have been two, and none of them have shown him as gay. 
And the reasoning behind that is that it was like a while ago. I don't know the exact setting, but the olden days. The olden days. The olden days. I think it's the like it's 20s like or something. The 20s. And yeah. the reasoning is like Dumbledore is not going to walk up to someone in like the 20s and be like, hello, I'm gay. Which is true. But you, but also. But you can still show it if he's like with his person in secret. His, his person. In, I don't like the word secret, lover. It his, makes it his, his secret his, person. His secret person. The word his lover. I'm so uncomfortable saying that one anymore. His secret person. His significant secret tunnel. Other. Secret. Secret. Okay. <laughs> secret. Secret tunnel. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> um. So there was that whole thing where it's like yeah, you're not showing it. But it's also like queer coding, like. Maybe it's kind of it's also kind of no, queer like, baiting. I'm saying it's, well, first off, it's queer baiting, but I'm saying you could have queer coded Dumbledore. Yeah, so the gays would know. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, with do we? I don't know if we want to go into queer baiting right now. We could, I but mean, like, should we? Queer baiting. What, what's queer on, baiting. That's on the yeah. rest of the list, though. It's literally just a list of titles. <laughs> like you guys can see this. I mean, we could go into queer baiting if you want. Sure, Voltron. but I know you guys want to talk about cartoons. <laughs> These two love cartoons. I don't understand it, but I know you have cartoons. Cartoons are fantastic. Yeah. Do you want to talk about those? Like, I you gave me a like a there's if on you, the if list. You can read some because I it's forget. It's Shira, Dragon Prince, and Voltron. Oh, also, um, Legend of Korra. Oh yeah. We. Oof. Okay. Yeah, we can talk about that. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a bad show, you guys. Okay. Okay. We'll go into that later. Okay, cartoons. But, no queer baiting. Queer baiting. Queer baiting. Shoot. <laughs> Queer baiting, you want to do that? Because I'm not going to talk about it because I don't feel educated on the topic. But if you want to, go ahead. I mean, queer baiting is... Is anyone educated? <laughs> <laughs> That's deep, man. Panic around the room. <laughs> Sorry, I keep cutting you off. <laughs> it's okay. So queer baiting is basically just um, when writers will um, just say, oh yeah, we have this character who's LGBT in some way, and then they don't really like go through the effort to show that character being LGBT. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, that's what's happening with Dumbledore. Um, it, they're, honestly, queer baiting also isn't just like outright saying it, it's also just kind of like alluding to the fact to uh, attract that audience, like in promos, they allude to the fact that there's gonna be a queer relationship here to attract that audience, because money, mm -hmm. and they don't show it which is a practice that's used quite a bit and i think a lot of shows especially now people are becoming more aware of what queer baiting is a lot of shows i think have been unrightfully labeled as queer baiting and it just yeah. becomes this huge thing where it's just like it people are talking about it but they don't really totally understand it it's just like this whole thing that's very messy and convoluted so like some of the big shows that have been queer, called queer baiting are like sherlock Supernatural, and you could make an argument for those shows. Yeah, that they're queer baiting them. Um, what are the other ones? I don't. I only watch Sherlock, <laughs> um, but they have been labeled as queer baiting, and some unrightfully so, some rightfully show, so show, some unrightfully show. <laughs> Bad pun, but it happened. Okay. <laughs> so it's just this whole messy, convoluted thing. Yeah, and. Um, I mean, it, I don't know, it's just kind of messed up because you're, like, playing to a minority and being like, hey, we're going to show you representation that you've literally never gotten and then still not delivering. Yeah. Especially with, like, I think it's different because you can't really do that with, like, other minorities. Like, when it's people of color, you yeah, you would see it in the promo, whereas in, like, yeah. whereas here it's, like, friendship kiss? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just let him so funny. It's just like how I mean, many friendship kisses have you ever had? I anyway. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> um. So that's what queer baiting is, and a lot of shows have been um labeled it, and it's just uh especially like crimes of Grindelwald and like J.K. Rowling and all of that. It's like you say he's gay. Here's an opportunity to show it. You're not taking it. Yeah. To be fair, there are three more movies. Yeah. To be fair, the two movies aren't that good. So we don't really know. She's again, just rolling again on Twitter. Is um saying like you're coming after me for this script that I wrote, and I know how it's gonna play out. But I still have three more movies to do this. So like, calm down and wait. Fair. We could totally be all up in arms about nothing. Yeah. It's happened before. <laughs> so it's all just kind of like, who? Pre representation is such like a hard topic to talk about because yeah. it's like we need it and we want it people are kind of doing it kind of not it's all messy because you don't really know 
Yeah. Um, like, okay. queer baiting, especially in shows, like, active shows, is probably not the right word, but, like, shows that are, like... On the air? On the air, thank you. Like, it's kind of hard to, like, label a show that's on the air as queer baiting. Because you don't know yet. Yeah, because you don't know, because it's still going, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know, I've seen shows that, like, have a gay couple that's, like, healthy relation. This is Umbrella Academy, but it's, like, a healthy gay relationship. Nothing about Umbrella Academy is healthy. Okay. He's a gorilla man. There's a gorilla man on the show. <laughs> incest, He's part really gorilla, the and there's man. incest. It's also uh, mentally like, unstable, but it's not so, a healthy no, show. No, my point, my, but I'm getting to the point. It's like yeah, the good a, part. There's a healthy gay relationship in there, as, like, as far as we can tell. As far as we can tell. As far as we can tell, and, the, and I'm saying that because like it was very, it shown, it was shown very briefly. We know they had a relationship. Break it is heart. very sweet. I love it. I love them. Um, I love that. Show. But also, like, part of me is like, oh, it's not really, like, it's not, it's not exactly queer baiting. No, I think it is. I, it's, I mean, sort of, but it's also there's more seasons to come. Yeah. So we could get more of that, but it's like, Did so we get like the small snippet of the gay relationship. So cute. It's very cute. And then we also get, like, a three-minute dance scene that's basically, like, incest. I'm sorry. It's incest. They're adopted siblings. Yeah. That's not going to that. Yeah. But, the, but it was, but like, it was like, straight relationship. It was the main straight relationship in the show. Yeah. It's, the, like, the main relationship. Yeah. So Umbrella Academy is an interesting case because it is, like, a flashback that this is shown. But also yeah. there are a lot of seasons to come. And did they use it in the promos a lot? I, I don't think I it could be qua- I don't think it could be qualified as queer baiting. If yeah. they didn't really use it in the promos. And it's just kind of this thing that's like, here now. Yeah. If they're using it to lure the audience, then I think it's like gray territory about like what yeah. you're doing here. But yeah. like, but also like if you're doing like a specifically queer thing, you're going to show that in the promos. So it's all very convoluted. Yeah. That, we were just talk very, yeah. that was very vague talking about it. was very vague. Me, but yeah. Because it's so hard to explain. Yeah. I don't even know what happens in the show. <laughs> I recommend it. But, like... Yeah, it's, it's so... We're I was just cartoons. Cartoons. Yay, I brought it up, and now. we didn't deliver. Let's deliver now. I know you can talk about it. Would you it. like to So, start the or... list that I do remember was... What, what's the list? <laughs> we have a list. She-Ra? We're prepared. she I haven't seen it. Okay. I heard there are lesbians. Are there lesbians? There are lesbians. There yes. are. So, okay. Season two's, like, about to come out. And, like, in season one, it wasn't, like... There wasn't anything, like, super big, like, as far as I noticed. I didn't finish season one. Oh, Wait. okay, great. No, I got, like, halfway through. Okay, so there are cool. there are lesbians, but they're kind of, like, at the end. There are lesbians, yes. Like, we knew that they were two, like, queens or something, which we need to also talk about later with, uh, yeah, dragon pants. Oh. Yeah, but she brought these two princesses, like, they were introduced, like, in the beginning, but they weren't, like really introduced they were just kind of there but like <laughs> me and my friend group <laughs> just kind of there and like i don't know a, a, lot, a lot of the fandoms kind of like also like yeah this is like a lot of like gay like it's like just i mean I don't know. It's, was... hard for me to, it's hard for me to explain but if you like watched it like you might kind of get it but i'm also kind of like it's like just a wholesome but also interesting kind of show in a way but but are they out like out relation out really shown as gay the two queens they they're like yeah we're in a relationship and they both sorry kick ass <laughs> like together ass is not a swear word you guys are fine i don't think I, <laughs> well it's too late now um but like they kick ass together at the end and they're both like really happy and it's like yeah. cute and it's like oh yeah yeah i love that because so it's like a kid show too yeah, it's, yeah. it Where is where it's a kid like show. finally right show the babies let them know and so I'm, but, like not like, but babies, I also like, like so Bo, Bo is yeah. like against toxic masculinity and I it's like so, so great and he's like wholesome and <laughs> He's just wonderful, and yeah. there are some, like, things about how he has, like, two fathers, which ha- wasn't... Jesus sh- had two dads. ...wasn't shown in the... <laughs> Bo is Jesus. <laughs> we should not joke about Jesus on the show. Oh. <laughs> I love but, you, Jesus. But, like, because like, it... But the fathers weren't shown the in the first Easter. season, so I'm, like, hoping, you know, this this Friday... Tune in. <laughs> Not on this, Shira. Tune in Watch to Netflix on the 26th of April. Tune in to Netflix. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, but that's um, amazing too, because in like a kids show, when it's like a car- it's like a cartoon market, it's generally towards kids. Like yeah. it's kind of gathered like a teen audience a little bit more, I think. Yeah, but you're a teen. Still, yeah, but it's also like 
it's also a kids show. It's also a kids show, which is super good. And I love wholesome kids shows that finally, like, because like if I had had that stuff, like if I had seen that stuff shown to me, I my short life would have been a lot easier. And like this period of time where it was like struggling, like what the, what is gay? I don't know. <laughs> what is a homosexual? I do not understand. It would have been a lot easier. Cause it's like, oh, that character is queer. So am I, cool, I can be that character. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And it's like role models, they're important. Yeah, it's exactly. just like. Give them them. It's, it's And it, they don't make a big deal out of it too, which is like, they're just gay. Right. That's it. Yeah. They're just gay. And the show's not over yet. Show's not over yet. Yeah. Maybe you'll get more gay. Yeah. Or maybe you'll crash and burn, we'll see. <laughs> maybe, I mean, I'm full Tron. And then you. So, all right, there I, are other I, Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna talk about more cartoons. I was gonna talk about Dragon Prince. Let's do All it. Right, I have it. Yeah, go, go right. off a little bit. I watched so, the first episode. Okay, Dragon Prince me. is like, it's a good show. I like the show. I'm a child. I only watch cartoons. Please. We yeah. both only me watch too. cartoons. Don't come for me. It's literally just the two of you that just watch cartoons and like just chat about it. And I'm just sitting here like, what the heck is going on? Solidarity. Okay. Um. <laughs> um. So, in um. Voltron? I almost said Voltron. In Dragon Prince. In the Dragon Prince. Um, in the second season, um, there are two queens who are married. The queens. You're a queen. It's so wholesome. It's so wholesome. Like, so the queens of Durin, and um, so it is shown in a flashback. Such a nerd. It's shown you in can't a flashback, deny it. so. <laughs> queens of Durin. There, it's, the, yeah. So it's the kingdom. So, so it's shown in a flashback, so it's not like. We don't really like get kind of like umbrella macad, umbrella macad, umbrella macad, macad me. But but it's shown in a flashback, even though. But it's like they have a child, and yeah. that child is the ruler of that kingdom. Yeah, which is why the flashback Quran, is brought the up. The kingdom of Quran, like, or whatever. Quran. <laughs> <laughs> like the kingdom of Quran, is that what you said? No, it's Durin. But anyway, Durin. so yeah. so the two queens, like, like yes, they also kick ass together, and they do have an on-screen kiss. And it's not really, like, the fact that they're, like, queens isn't a big deal, and they're, like, very respected. Yeah. And, I don't know. Because they're queens. Yeah, and it was also <laughs> unexpected. Like, they didn't, like, advertise that at all, as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry, this is all off topic, but the advertisement thing about the two uh, queens got me reminded me of this. Yeah. Riverdale. They had two people kiss, like, two women kiss. These two main characters kiss in, like, a... Was it a friendship kiss? It was a friendship kiss, and they um like made a whole promo, a huge promo, pro, um, promo about it, and like they just used it for advertising everywhere, and it's like we have lesbians. But it was a friendship. But they did it, but they, it was this weird thing where they they kissed in front of the popular girl to seem like, for like shock value, and the popular girl went, oh, lesbians aren't shocking anymore, and I was like, well, first of all, what? <laughs> Second of all, it, they just used it for this whole thing, and it got the queers. It got me. Yeah. They got me. <laughs> and then that was the whole thing, and they used it, and Riverdale sucks. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, that's oh, very <laughs> unproblematic, but that reminded me of yeah. that. Because they're, 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 they're literally friends. They're literally both straight. Have love interests. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Um, an another show is Adventure Time. <laughs> Oh, there's that, like a little box man that has a high voice. Little box Pimo. man. No, Pimo. the boy. Oh, with the freaking ears. Finn. Voiced yeah. by Jeremy Hayter or yeah. whatever. But yeah. I was also thinking Bimo. Bimo. I haven't seen it. Bimo's I haven't by seen a, woman. a lot of these things. I don't care. I, I know, but anyway, so. Is it gay? Um, yeah. They're... Yes, because of the two lesbians. Yeah, the two lesbians. <laughs> Um, I, well, I think one of them is bi. At least one of them is bi. The bubblegum chick. No, no, they're chick. both bi. The they're goth both. and the yeah. bubblegum. Yeah, the goth and the... <laughs> goth I know the things. Golf. I know things. Okay, so yeah. So um, I rewatched some of it up until like season five or something. Mm -hmm. And I had watched the show when I was a kid. So, and I knew these two um, women were gay. I knew they were going to get together. Like, I knew they were going to end up together. David has that ability to tell. No, no, I'd, I'd like, heard it. Oh, well, Like, I, I, knew, I knew that was going to happen. You, like, at the hall there, you weren't watching it, being, like, yeah. a lesbian. Yeah, and, like, I remember I being, was. like, <laughs> I remember being, like, did they even build up to that? And, like, they actually did, which really surprised me. And, I, I no, I just thought that was kind of cool that, like, all, it was, like, it's, like, a 10-season show. And, like, all the way back in, like, season, it's, like, like 10-minute episodes, so it's, like, stretches out. But, like, all the way back in, like, season three or something, their relationship was actually developing that way. Speaking of developing relationships, Legend of Korra. 
It's Ooh. another cartoon because we love our cartoons. Okay, we're all children. I, mm, the, so, in this show, it's a sequel to After Last Airbender. And sorry. what we're just going to do, basic rundown, is um, this fantasy world. And we're finally giving a plot summary. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't like given any plot okay. summary about all Korra, these shows. It takes it's it's a good bit after the last Airbender. I'm sorry, I'm taking what this I was over. saying. Wait, wait. Oh, I thought you were. This is getting hijacked. Sorry, we are giving one, but I was just talking. Or was just continue. <laughs> you know it more better than me. Okay. Go and for basically, it. you know, in the last Airbender, there wasn't all this like technology. And it's kind of like in the industrial revolution kind of area, like time, and it's like kind of like that. And it's um, it's very interesting. You know, so, the world's kind of a little bit it's a fantasy world together. but it's this fantasy world industrial revolution it's a four season show it focuses on a new avatar which is a guy who can bend all four elements it's an exciting time i can recite the intro from you're not the the intro. Intro. you need me to i can too you're not <laughs> special oh <laughs> shot tired okay you're just a nerd um, um but so this show Throughout like, the first three seasons, I think there are these two characters. Well, actually, throughout the whole show, there are these two characters introduced in like, the first episode. Korra, the main character, and... Asami. Asami, this, um... Right? Is that her name? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, I was thinking, um... They're continue. introduced. And then... Continue. Hijinx pursue. Hijinx. <laughs> well, so, here. You know what? I'm sorry. It's, Go. It's, it's actually in soon, Okay, but. so... Shut the hell up. Korra... The, first of all, I'm gonna... <laughs> Mako... can do this correctly. Is, is we need Mako? like a we need like a flow chart or something. <laughs> Four okay. main characters. Okay, but Mako. Okay, Mako is like this dude, right? And he <laughs> basically Cora <laughs> is like ooh Mako, <laughs> and then like that's like her first like love interest. Yeah. And Mako's kind of like whatever. Ooh, and Asami. Then Asami shows up. Mako's into Asami. They date. There's all the this like drama, drama. Blah blah blah. But basically. <laughs> at the end of that. At the end of that. All that drama. Um, like Cora is recovering. She and so Asami, yeah. like people, like all her friends are like writing her, but the only person that she'll talk to is Asami, and reply to. Right? I'm getting that right. Yeah. Okay. Like they they visit. I each don't other. know. Or they, she visits her. Uh, Asami visits. Season Korra. four wasn't free, so I didn't watch yes, it. Yes, but but Asami, like for a while, they only talk via letter, and like because it's just like back and forth letters. And anyways, basically, that's very nice. They're and, lesbians, like, Carol. <laughs> they're bi, I think. They're bi -vians. They're bi -vians. No, 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 no. They are both bi, yeah. Yeah, they're both so bi. So at the end of that, they're writing the letters, and they they're kind of sort of get together. Kind they hold so, hands. So, yeah, they hold hands, and then they go on to a vacation into the spirit world, and it's beautiful. <laughs> but <laughs> first, I don't but think there's, there's any build-up. There's actually comics afterwards that oh, have them. But no one read those. No, a lot of people read those. So, you yeah. two read those. I didn't. I them. haven't read them. Then why are Because, but in the show, the biggest thing about it, in the show... That's like the big part. That's the, the big thing with the characters, right? No build up. Yeah, there's there, not. I there's watched not a lot. I watched. You kind of like have to be looking for. I it. watched all the way to season three because season four was not free. So, <laughs> and there was like I was like what season four? There's not. There's not a lot of build. You're right. There yeah. isn't a lot of build also, up. Holding hands isn't like. They kiss in the comics, right? They're married in the comics. Oh, they're married in the comics. Oh yeah. crap! Yeah, no, no, shit happens in the comics. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's like they're like <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fighting gonna, for rights. It's fine. Like they're fighting for marriage rights. Like oh, that's that. what happens. And but in the show, in there the show, is no build up. In the show, it's, it's there's literally not out of nowhere. But it's, Asami is like, if I you're care for you, for, yeah. And like, there's all this. But that's stuff. just friendship. Yeah. So here's so here's. The it's thing. a friendship kiss. <laughs> it's a friendship marriage. It's a friend. It's um. It's for tax benefits. Why else would you get married? Benefits. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm Anyways, sorry. I should not. We're be bad honest. at giving summaries. Yeah. yeah. No. So that was not so, a great summary. But basically, there's not a ton of buildup. But when did the show come out? Do you remember? I don't remember. Would you guys yeah. consider like good representation though? I, in a kid show. In the comics, it's good representation. Um, in the show, which is the, again the big part of it. Yeah, it's, I, it's I don't know. It's just a show. Uh, I can't, I have. It's been a while since I've watched. I have it. biased opinions because I don't like the show. <laughs> it's bad compared to after the last. Okay, okay, it's okay bad. so but regardless like, of that, yeah, regardless of that, <laughs> was, I don't know. Was one show for a very long time. Yeah, and we still haven't given a sufficient plot summary. <laughs> Look, well, cause like each for each season has like a different, like completely different plot. Yeah. They don't overarch it all, and they like, aren't connected. I'm like, what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, no. I mean, and then the last thing is just like gay, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, no. So first off, 
yeah, it's a lot more in the comics, but you have to, like, keep in mind that um, with earlier shows that, like, it wasn't as easy to put out representation. Like, people didn't want it in kids' shows. It was, like, like, 2011. But, like, people would still be up in arms about it. People are up in arms about it now. And you know what? Maybe they just, like, shoved it in. Okay, this is going to sound bad because, you know, (laughs) but, like, maybe they just kind of, like, tried to slide it into that last season because then, like, they can't. It's over and no one can bitch at them about it. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. We've established ass. We're not going past ass. It, we are far past ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds so weird. It does. Um, what was I going to say? Um, frick. Um, I'm gone. It's gone. I, it's too late. Oh. But, like, in the kids' shows... What the frick was I going to say? More recent kids... Uh, no, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, they, go for it. I think they also just shoved it in at the end so that people wouldn't stop watching their show. Because, which is similar to what you said, but also because people, like, people will get mad and they were just like, it'll appease the gays so they'll like our show, but straights won't stop watching because at the end, so we get our woke points. But it, that's, again, that's it, a good point. Woke that's points. That's true, but also but the comics. Yeah, they can. Like the comics, but no one's going to read the comics. Okay, so first of all, a lot, a lot of people do. The comics are a big part of the Avatar universe because there were ones after Avatar. That's the true. The Last Airbender. Uh, yeah. Which people love those. Yeah, and which people were also, like, yeah, they had, like, really, like, important, like, plot things in there, but too. put them in the show. Yeah. But, Support I mean, like, it with the show yeah, instead of just putting also, it there. Yeah, but also, like I said, like, they can't, they couldn't have always done that. Right, and Nickelodeon yeah. was probably like, okay, you're done. Yeah. Like, you made a gay, go, go away. Leave. Your, your show. But then why did Nickelodeon publish the uh, comics? Huh. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, airtime, first of all, there's only so many things you can cram into whatever channel. You could easily have made them queer. That's, like the no, first you're, season. you're right. But, like, it's like, it, you don't have to take up airtime. It's just, like, what if they just, had other projects? Like, that's, that's, I'm just, I'm spitballing here. I <laughs> could be completely wrong. And I also agree with you. Like I said, it's, but like before, with like Harry Potter, convoluted. You don't know their intentions. You really don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. None of us are educated. Yeah, but I don't, still, it wasn't really. But it also wasn't like really queer made. I know. I, I know. Like, we're like really defending this, but it's like I know you two weren't like in depth. Yeah. No, no. Like, it's, ah. But it's also like it's like like this with other shows too, where like they might have not been able to put that representation in, or they would have been canceled. Like I'm pretty sure that's what happened with Voltron. We don't be going to that. Maybe that, like I a, mean that's kind of a big can of worms and it's been a while voltron is a more recent cartoon show it's too late we're going into it okay <laughs> here we go <laughs> it's a more recent cartoon show meaning the argument of that they couldn't have really put it in because they would lose viewership is still when? valid but not as valid when yeah. did it when was the first season 2016 i can google it 2016 okay yeah, it was like google it. so it, it's i'm professional correct me if i'm wrong but the main issue was so there were like a, they were a couple seasons in or something and then they just said shiro was gay was yeah. that correct i think was so. that the argument was that the issue yeah it, they was like and then there was nothing for another few yeah. seasons and then like suddenly suddenly he like had a boyfriend and, and then he was like married and it's like what yeah. the hell's going on the, yeah the yeah. last season like he gets married but like his first like his like significant although wartime but also okay. like so <laughs> voltron again <laughs> cartoon show again. fantasy universe it's about lions in space essentially <laughs> it was an old 80s show and an it's rebooted show. on netflix if you <laughs> remember the old 80s show it's better than that <laughs> it's only the first three like three seasons but ago. so it's this whole show at cultivated this huge online following this huge fandom it was beautiful in the beginning of the it was a wonderful fandom and then it all went to hell oh yeah the no, show toxic. and the fandom so we're gonna talk about the show because fandom's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> the show itself, I enjoyed in the first seasons, and then in the later seasons. And at, wait, pause. As the show itself, I think it does fairly good with other forms of representation. There are people of color. There are people of different backgrounds, different ethnicities, ethnicities, ed- ethnicities. Thank you. <laughs> and it's a really good show in that aspect. It's, it's they did better in than the '80s cartoon because they had more like women representation, different people of color. It was beautiful in the beginning. And then people started wondering, like, oh, they're good at this. Maybe there's going to be queer representation. And I think the showrunners want queer representation, too. They kind of put it out there, like, oh, there's going to be this. The actors were kind of, like, hinting at it. Stuff like that. So it was re- everyone started getting really excited because there's this one huge, like, ship that was in the fandom. And people were like, it's going to be canon. 
it's gonna be huge, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be these two main characters together. Okay. And it's gonna be canon, it's gonna be great. I'm trying to think of which one. Dude, you know which one it is. So okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was people were very excited and I was very excited because I followed the show from the beginning and I was like, heck yes. <laughs> Let's go. Bring on the gays. Yeah. Hit me with that gay shit. I swore, God no. Anyways. <laughs> so <laughs> it was very sad. People were very happy. And then as the seasons progressed, nothing really happened. And then finally we kinda got towards the tail end of it. And this one character, his name is Shiro, he was shown to be a gay man. A gay man. A gay man. He's a gay man. Didn't yeah. they hint at him being gay before? Nope. Or not hint, but then they just say like Shiro is gay in an earlier season. No, they literally nothing, and just out of the blue. Yeah, okay. like, in, I, like season seven, I he watched, was like they have a he has a dead boyfriend. I watched all eight seasons knowing he was going to be gay. I watched it from the beginning knowing yeah. he was going to be gay. I saw nothing. It's literally yeah. nothing. And they were just they put it in there because one fans wanted it. They wanted some kind of representation, and it wasn't bad. Like by itself, this arc with this character Shiro and his boyfriend is good. It's but they just like as a story, very good. Liked it. But with all the background of the showrunners, the showrunners worked on Legend of Korra. So people were very excited because they were like, Legend of Korra is gay. And they did the exact same thing they did with Legend of Korra. Putting it in at the end, no build-up. Oh my oh gosh, that wait, that makes sense. Yeah, they did the same yeah. thing. Season 8, oh, yeah. yeah, they kissed, that's it. And But the, in Korra, they didn't even kiss. So Sorry. in season 7, Shira was shown, shown as a gay man. He has a boyfriend who passes in season 7, spoilers, he dies. And then it's season eight, it's like the end screen, they're going through what happened to all these characters after the show end, and suddenly it was like Shiro got married. Yeah. yeah. We didn't know the character that Shiro got married to. I had to Google his name. We yeah. Nobody knows, it just suddenly... Yeah, everyone was like in the control room, and then like... He was just like there, like one interaction. and then like, here's a guy no one cares about, marry him. He's male, you're male, go for it. I mean... Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> also, was like... Weird. There's one thing that bothered me, and might just be because be, because of the fandom, but like, Shira was like the captain of that ship, and he the ship. the Curtis was the Curtis is I think is his name yeah something like Curtis, and yeah. just he's like part of the crew and people sorry anyways yeah no that uncomfortable the, power dynamic yeah that pa- yeah. uncomfortable power dynamic and I didn't see a lot of that thankfully but it was just like a weird thing that yeah. happened and it's like. They could have also put rep in, or, like, they could have shown that Shiro was gay, because, like, throughout the show, the other characters are, like, talking about their family and, like, people from home, and they could have... Shiro gets nothing. We don't know anything about his home life. Yeah, Except that he's a dead boyfriend. Yeah, that's, like, all we know. But, but, like, we didn't even know that until, like, we... Yeah. yeah. They, honestly, it could have, like, I, I still love the show. I still, you guys probably have it. I, I like love the, the first show. three seasons. I love the show. I think it's a very good show. I love the stories by itself. I think that it could have been done much, much better. We are running out of time, and this <laughs> whole show has been kind of negative. <laughs> so I think I'm going to just list off a few good representations. Um, One Day at a Time is a show on Netflix that was sadly canceled because screw Netflix. <laughs> it was so, rep- it was, I, Netflix is fun. Love you, Netflix. Don't get mad at me. They're gonna come. <laughs> they're gonna see this show and they're gonna get so mad. But it's a wonderful show. It's about a single Cuban mother who was a war veteran, has PTSD, raising these two kids, one who both obviously Cuban, and they are raising these two kids, one of whom is shown is um realizes their sexuality at the course of the show. It handles mental health, it handles racism, it handles sexism, it handles homophobia, it handles so many of these things wonderfully. Again, sadly can't left for three seasons. But Beautiful. Watch it. Amazing. Did it, didn't another network pick it up, or am I wrong? I don't think so. Oh. I haven't heard. Sense Eight is another Netflix show. I saw a little bit of it, but it has a transgender character, and um, I think all the main characters are confirmed pansexual. Fun. Literally, just kind of went blanket. They all gay, <laughs> and it was like hell yeah. <laughs> so that's really exciting. And the this transgender woman marries her partner on the show. Beautiful. Loved it. So good. We talked about Love Simon. We talked about Umbrella Academy. Um, Magnus Chase, the and the Gods of Asgard is a book series written by Rick Riordan, and it's the it's about this homeless guy who is part god. Fun fact, and it's a wonderful it's a wonderful book series. And there's um, 
a main Muslim character, there's a gender fluid character, the main character's pansexual, there's a deaf character, all these are main characters too. And it's beautiful, and Rick Riordan does a really good job at representation. His first book, you like, he kind of tricked Disney, which is really funny. His first book is like about these inherently like normal kids, all white, all like st- straight. And it's, he like, and then like it grew in popularity. And people started, like, wanting these other books, and he kept writing them, and as he kept writing them, they got more and more diverse. <laughs> and even in the beginning, all the three main characters have um, learning disabilities. So, super good, all of his books. So good, so wholesome. I, they were the books that got me into reading. And honestly, as they aged with, like, the queerness, so did I, and I, like, followed them, and it was so helpful. So, that's good. What else I got on this list? Uh, you guys talked about all the cartoons that you liked. So that's exciting. And then <laughs> Symptoms of Being Human is also a really good book. It's about a gender fluid character who runs a blog and it's in like out, out, an anonymous blog, and then outed and it's super good. Love it. And I also love that they, in that Symptoms of Being Human, they never specifically say the birth sex. So the whole time it's like they're just gender fluid. It's like you don't know anything else. It's just they are gender fluid and it's really wonderful. Super good books. What else do I have? I'm trying to think in my head now because I'm out of the, the list is gone. <laughs> Ugh. Um, so I have honestly read so many, and we did an episode similar to this too. Where if you wanna, if you wanna hear me rant about other ones, go there. And then I think we're gonna end. This. So everyone, we're gonna go down and we're gonna say our final, last words, our takeaway, whatever we're, the sentence we want to stick in their brains after they end the show. So we're gonna start with Pepper. Why, why me? Because um. I'm not ready. <laughs> Uh, and I control this, so go. I don't know what to say here. Um, I don't know. I'm just, like, trying to process everything already, so. Um, you want to start again then? Sure, yeah. Okay. We'll send so, the and then we'll go to the back to the dragon prince. Hey, this don't, is the no, last sentence. Last sentence. They have a lot of other diverse characters. It's not just the Queen of Dur. Queens of Durham, they the have like, aunt or whatever. yeah, um, they have like a, um, a mute character, is she, I think she, no, she's not deaf, no, she's mute, um, yeah. they have people of color, they, um, there's a third season coming out, it's a very good show, a lot of diversity, yeah. Is that your last words? Also, read the comics from The Legend of Korra, because <laughs> yes, it's gay. It's gay. <laughs> um, representation is important. And it's like a double-edged sword, really, because you can do it wonderfully, you can do it horribly. Just try your best not to do it horribly. <laughs> and also, um, it's really difficult trying to have to seek out books that you see represented, in, but they are out there, and they are, it's hard, they're hard to find, but they are out there. And don't be an ass. Don't Your friend be, Piper. Don't be an ass is a great Is that the one. takeaway? Just don't be an ass. Don't be an that's ass. That's the takeaway. That's the entire... That's kind of the it's takeaway. All of this youth edition is just like, don't be an ass. <laughs> No. Is that it? That's, I think that's... All right. All righty. This has been All Things LGBTQ+. Plus Youth, Youth edition. edition. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next month.